Yesterday, in my view, one of the darkest days in the history of our nation. An unprecedented assault on our democracy. An assault literally on the citadel of liberty in the United States Capitol itself. An assault on the rule of law. An assault on the most sacred of American undertakings, ratifying the will of the people and choosing the leadership of their government. All of us here grieve the loss of life, grieve the desecration of the people's house. But we, what we witnessed yesterday was not dissent, it was not disorder, it was not protest, it was chaos. They weren't protesters. Don't dare call them protesters. They were a riotous mob, insurrectionists, domestic terrorists. It's that basic, it's that simple. And I wish we could say we couldn't see it coming. But that isn't true. We could see it coming. The past four years, we've had a president who's made his contempt for our democracy, our Constitution, the rule of law, clear in everything he has done. Is America a democracy? America is a democracy. It was founded as a democracy. America was founded as a constitutional republic to safeguard the liberties of the people against the tyranny of democracy or of one-man dictatorship. People are trying to convince Trump supporters, others, that America is not a democracy in the first place. In this century, great strides have been made toward the goal of subverting our republic and transforming it into a democracy. The foremost tactic of the subverters is subversion of language. Honestly, the word democracy and the word republic have often been used interchangeably. There isn't a meaningful difference between them. By calling America a democracy until people thoughtlessly accept and use the term, totalitarians have obscured the real meaning of American principles of government. I've heard a lot of conspiracy theories. I hear a lot of things <laughs> out on the road. But to hear Americans, people who would describe themselves as patriots, say that America is not a democracy, that stopped me in my tracks. You are hearing people say America is not a democracy because there are people around Trump who want them to be saying that, who've been planting that narrative. Nobody knows the system better than me. Which is why I alone can fix it. I have seen firsthand how the system is rigged against our citizens, just like it was rigged against Bernie Sanders. He never had a chance, never had a chance. Millions of Democrats will join our movement because we are going to fix the system so it works fairly and justly for each and every American. What are these false claims of widespread election fraud doing to our country right now? When you hear numbers like 70% of Republicans believing that Donald Trump actually won the election, or at least that Joe Biden wasn't legitimately elected, it's hard to claw your way back from that. I understand why the president wants to keep on fighting. I, I do believe, however, that it's destructive to the cause of democracy. Uh, to suggest widespread fraud or corruption. The reporting last week about the agreement the DNC had with the Clinton campaign, Senator Warren said it was proof the primary process was rigged. What we have to focus on now as Democrats is we recognize the process was rigged. You can run the best campaign, you can even become the nominee, and you can have the election stolen from you. It is one more step in delegitimizing not just the incoming Biden administration, but democracy in general. The indictment charges 12 Russian military officers by name for conspiring to interfere 
with the 2016 presidential election. There was a lot of sexism and misogyny. There was voter suppression. There was the FBI's intervention. And then there were the Russians, the Russians and the Russians. Elections have consequences. If we are right about the fraud, Joe Biden can't be president. I told him that the stuff that his people were shoveling out to the public were bu was bullshit. I mean, that the claims of fraud were bullshit. And then late in the evening or early in the morning, boom, these explosions of bullshit. Donald Trump's big lie that the 2020 election was stolen is still at the center of Republican politics, especially at the state level. And with the prospect of a presidential election on the horizon, it has the potential to get worse. There's very good reason to believe all of this is linked to recycled conspiracy theories from the past, all completely discredited. Benson's uh, legislation making it a crime to knowingly spread misinformation about elections. Is that enforceable? And then there's the sort of counter argument that the more you punish folks like this, the more a kind of almost, the more it makes them dig in their heels, right? The more, at least when you talk about misinformation on social media, you, you try and you try and censor it, you try and, you know, prevent it from spreading and, it, and the virus finds its way to another host. It is tricky with the First Amendment. I'd want to see what the texts are, but there are things that we can do to really push back against an election denialism. Like we need to be able to acknowledge that this is a not a bipartisan problem. The problem we have is that one party is hijacking a system of elections. The Clinton campaign calls this a crime reminiscent of Watergate, but worse. What's really important about WikiLeaks is that the Russian government has engaged in espionage against Americans. The Russians are here. They're interfering in the election. They're at the heart of these leaks. They're working with WikiLeaks. This has come from the highest levels of the Russian government, clearly from Putin himself, in an effort, as 17 of our intelligence agencies have confirmed, to influence our election. Did Hillary Clinton lie to the FBI? Although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. People I really respect, like uh, Jim Clapper uh, and John Brennan and others, who knew what the Russians were doing, have been sounding the alarm because it's not going to stop. That's what I'm worried about. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. You thought Hillary Clinton had a 100% chance of winning the election. 100% chance. You still think she has a 100% chance of winning the election? Mm. I do. I know that sounds crazy. This is not the outcome we wanted or we worked so hard for. And I'm sorry that we did not win this election for the values we share and the vision we hold for our country. This is painful and it will be for a long time. I went to the inauguration of Donald Trump, which was one of the hardest am, days of my life. I, we're covering a story that no one saw yeah. coming. Well, my crystal ball has been shattered into atoms here because I predicted the exact opposite of what happened. The hand of the Kremlin has been at work in this campaign for some time. You can't say for certain that the President of the United States is not compromised by the Russians. Yeah, it is stunning, and I wish I wasn't saying it, but it's just, it's the truth. Breaking news, CNN learning tonight that Hillary Clinton's campaign and the Democratic National Committee helped fund the research which led to the controversial and, frankly, uh, salacious and disgusting in some of its allegations dossier that detailed alleged Russian efforts to help Donald Trump's presidential campaign. I think it was uh, disgraceful, disgraceful, that the intelligence agencies allowed any information that turned out to be so false and fake out. I think it's a disgrace. And I say that, and I say that. And that's something that Nazi Germany would have done and did do. I believe he knows he's an illegitimate president. I don't know what the Russians have on President Trump, whether it's personal, whether it's political, whether it's financial. 
I don't know what it is. You think they have something on them. But there's no other explaining. Was the FBI spying on Trump's campaign? Well, I, 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 no, he, they were not. They were spying on a, a term I don't particularly like, but on what the Russians were doing, trying to understand were the Russians infiltrating, trying to gain access, trying to gain leverage and influence. In the summer of 2016, the CIA and FBI and NSA worked very closely together to try to understand as much as possible about what the Russians were doing. And what they did was treason. What they did was terrible. What they did was against our Constitution and everything we stand for. As you know, on December 18th, the House of Representatives upheld its constitutional duty and voted articles of impeachment against the President of the United States, Donald Trump. The charges are extremely serious. To interfere in an election, to blackmail a foreign country, to interfere in our elections, gets at the very core of what our democracy is about. The President's purpose was personal and political. Accordingly, the president is guilty of an appalling abuse of public trust. Corrupting an election to keep oneself in office is perhaps the most abusive and destructive violation of one's oath of office that I can imagine. The Senate having tried Donald John Trump, president of the United States, upon two articles of impeachment exhibited against him by the House of Representatives and two thirds of the senators present not having found him guilty of the charges contained therein. It is therefore ordered and adjudged that the said Donald John Trump be, and he is hereby, acquitted of the charges in said articles. But there is strong support in the Congress uh, for impeaching the president a second time. Only president in American history to be impeached twice, just seven days, less than seven days now, uh, left in his term. And historically, it's interesting to note that between the first and second impeachments in our country's history, we're talking about a span of 130 years. And now between the third and the fourth, just 13 months. If you don't impeach him, he might be elected again. That's the fear. It looks like Mitch McConnell and other Republicans are trying to drive Donald Trump out of the party, not by voting to convict him, but by essentially accusing him, uh, holding him accountable for the riot, and almost inviting local prosecutors to uh, do their work for him. No politician in history, and I say this with great charity, has been treated worse or more unfairly. Don't give in. Don't back down and never stop doing what you know is right. Nothing worth doing ever, ever, ever came easy. And the more righteous your fight, the more opposition that you will face. I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. Can you please explain the difference between Vice President Biden's request to Ukraine a few years ago and President Trump's request to, to Ukraine earlier this year? Yes, when Vice President Biden uh, pressured the Ukrainian president to remove the corrupt prosecutor general, he was doing so with an international consensus um, as part of U.S. policy. The entire European Union supported that. The IMF supported that, the IMF, which also gave the loans that, that he was referring to. And so he did that as part of the entire um, international community's consensus. We are just in the midst of a transformation process where we move in the world from a unipolar to a multipolar world. And of course, here China, in this new geopolitical and geoeconomic context, plays an enormous role. As we've noted, we're now experiencing a 9-11 every day. After September 11th, the government created a commission to study what went wrong. How did we miss the clues? Our question this morning, is it time to establish a 9-11-like commission to study how significant parts of our government missed this, chose to dismiss the obvious danger, making it impossible for health officials to do their jobs? The reality is that the WHO failed to adequately obtain, vet, and share information in a timely and transparent fashion. Had the WHO done its job to get medical experts into China to objectively 
assess the situation on the ground, and to call out China's lack of transparency. The outbreak could have been contained at its source with very little death. Due to Donald Trump's lies and incompetence in the past six months have seen one of the gravest losses of American life in history. We literally left this White House a pandemic playbook that would have shown them how to respond before the virus reached our shores. They probably used it to, I don't know, prop up a wobbly table somewhere. We don't know where that playbook went. And with this crisis, a real crisis, the crisis that required serious presidential leadership, he just wasn't up to it. He froze. He failed to act. He panicked. They're telling you the existential threat to America is a bunch of poor refugees a thousand miles away. They're even taking our brave troops away from their families for a political stunt at the border. They're trying to institutionalize voter fraud in the United States of America. Uh, they want to make mail-in ballots permanent. It allows Joe Biden to continue to put what he wants to make front and center the virus. And Willie, any day the virus is the lead story is a day that President Trump's re-election is in trouble. You turn on CNN, that's all they cover. COVID, COVID, pandemic, COVID, 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 COVID. Uh, uh. You know why they're trying to talk everybody out of voting? People aren't buying it, CNN, you dumb bastards. They're not buying it. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. I understand and, that, but and, people are rioting. Do you commit oh, to making sure that there's a no, peaceful wanna, transfer of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. It's kind of stunning that a president of the United States, from the podium at the White House, is unwilling to commit to a peaceful transfer of power. The president would not commit to a peaceful transition of power. This is not something that we expect to hear in the United States. Under what circumstances would you concede the election? All I want is a fair election. So it's your judgment as to whether it's fair or not as to whether Stuart, you can see it. Stuart, they always talk about the friendly transition. They spied on my campaign and they got caught. They tried to overthrow the president of the United States and they got caught. And then they stand up so innocent and they say, will you, you know, do a fair transition? Well, they didn't do a fair transition. Donald Trump insulted your wife, insulted her very, in very personal terms to you. Do you hate this guy? And I love the FBI, and the FBI loves me, 99 percent. It was the top scum, and the FBI people don't like the top scum. I just need to ask you a few questions about official statements that President of the United States made this morning on his Twitter account. He said there is a criminal deep state. It was, in effect, an attempted coup uh, to, to defeat the duly elected President of the United States on the part of uh, the deep state. Basically, it was a deep state coup. Unelected deep state operatives who defy the voters to push their own secret agendas are truly a threat. So, Director Ray, I'm going to ask you, is there a deep state uh, at the FBI? Congressman, I've never completely understood the term deep state. It is true. Uh, this is my first stop, officially. There is nobody that feels stronger about the intelligence community and the CIA than Donald Trump. There is nobody. <laughs> the reason you're my first stop is that, as you know, I have a running war with the media. They are among the most dishonest human beings on Earth. Right? And they sort of made it sound like I had a feud with the intelligence community. And I just want to let you know, the reason you're number one stop uh, is exactly the opposite. Exactly. And they understand that, too. I'll be back. I'll be back. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 45th President 
of the United States, Donald J. Trump, to the stage. Over the past year, we have made extraordinary strides in the U.S. The stock market is smashing one record after another and has added more than $7 trillion in new wealth. So I had one of Hitler's speeches translated into English, and I think this tells us a lot about where Donald Trump is getting his ideas. We've created 2.4 million jobs. New unemployment claims are near the lowest we've seen in almost half a century. Is anybody running the executive branch of the government? Who is running the executive well, branch? Well, sadly, the person who's running the executive branch is a deranged, unhinged, dangerous president of the United States. African-American unemployment has reached the lowest rate ever recorded in the United States. And only a number of days until uh, we can be protected from him. Uh, but he has done something so serious uh, that there should be prosecution against him. Nothing is off the table. The world is witnessing the resurgence of a strong and prosperous America. There is a growing danger that threatens every blessing our ancestors fought so hard for. Our nation is witnessing a merciless campaign to wipe out our history, defame our heroes, erase our values, and indoctrinate our children. Angry mobs are trying to tear down statues of our founders, deface our most sacred memorials, and unleash a wave of violent crime in our cities. Many of these people have no idea why they're doing this, but some know exactly what they are doing. Black people are taking down this hate! Do you understand? Taking it down! It's one of the best feelings that I've had in a long time. Sometimes the movement has deteriorated into simply attacking whatever statue is available nearby. The unhinged left-wing mob is trying to vandalize our history, desecrate our monuments, our beautiful monuments. Their homage to hate, not heritage, they must be removed. Because this now belongs to us. With the climate of this nation, that I think it's very important that we move quickly and quietly. Cancel culture which seeks to erase our history. They want to demolish our heritage so they can impose their new oppressive regime in its place. Conventional warfare is very enemy force focused, whereas the, the suite of capabilities and activities we call irregular warfare are, are more often focused on the human terrain. There is a new far left fascism that demands absolute allegiance. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. This left-wing cultural revolution is designed to overthrow the American Revolution. groups and particularly uh, white supremacist groups do pose a fundamental threat to our democracy. Um, I, I, I am I'm very uh, pleased to have read that uh, the uh, director of the FBI believes that this kind of extremism is the most dangerous uh, threat um, uh, to the country um, and uh, that that's where he's putting FBI resources. Uh, and that is where I would put Justice Department resources. Do you have any regrets about your actions on January 6th? I don't think, and I've spoken to hundreds of thousands of people. I've never spoken to a crowd as large as this. And that was because they thought the election was rigged. And they were there proud. They were there with love in their heart. That was an unbelievable, and it was a beautiful day. Crazy Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of Washington were in charge, as you know, of security. And they They're did not, not do their the job. National Guard. 
You're in charge of the they National are in Guard. Well, I offered them National Guard. I said, we'll give you soldiers, we'll give you National Guard, we'll give you whatever you want. And they turned me down. Why weren't the National Guard there to begin with? They thought that they had sufficient resources. No, that is not a question of how they have been. They don't know. They clearly didn't know, and I take responsibility for not having them just prepare for more. If they would have had just, I offered them 10,000 soldiers, I said, it could be 10, it could be more, but I offered them specifically 10,000 soldiers. If they would have taken 500 soldiers, you wouldn't have the problem. They turned it down. And if you look at the Inspector General report, he says they turned it down. They made a terrible mistake. This president is guilty of inciting insurrection. insurrection. There will be a trial, and when that trial ends, senators will have to decide if they believe Donald John, Donald John Trump incited the erection, insurrection against the United States. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. He should have immediately denounced the mob when he saw what was unfolding. Based on your investigation so far, do you have any evidence that the Capitol attack was organized by, quote, fake Trump protesters? We have not seen evidence of that at this stage, certainly. I just left the protest at the Capitol building, and I uh, got a big bruise on my leg. I had a difficult time pulling off the act that I was paid to do. And uh, I'm making this video because I want to confess that I was paid to pretend to protest today. I can't say by who, but I will just say that it's a organized effort. Heaven forbid, if we don't protect mm. this democracy, mm. this constitution, our values, our institutions against false narratives, against demagogic wannabe authoritarian leaders. Shame on us. Good chase. Yeah. When you're ready, sir. Yeah. Right back. I know you're pain. I know you're hurt. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. We don't want anybody hurt. It's a very tough period of time. There's never been a time like this where such a thing happened, where they could take it away from all of us, from me, from you, from our country. This was a fraudulent election, but we can't play into the hands of these people. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. You've seen what happens. You see the way others are treated that are so bad and so evil. I know how you feel. But go home and go home in peace. The Democratic Party, unfortunately, is not the party that is of, by, and for the people. It's a par it is a party that has been and continues to be influenced by the foreign policy establishment in Washington, represented by Hillary Clinton and others' foreign policy, by the military-industrial complex and other greedy corporate interests. So I want to add my voice to the many who have endorsed you uh, to be our president. Just think of what a difference it would make right now if we had a president who not only listened to the science, put facts over fiction, but brought us together. Specifically, have you taken a cognitive no, test? No, I haven't taken a test. Why the hell would I take a test? Come on, man. That's like saying you, before you got in this program, you take a test where you're taking cocaine or not. What do you think, huh? America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was in the foot, uh, foot, foot, excuse me, the foothills of the Himalayas with Xi Jinping. I am, uh, I am 
very willing to let the American public judge my physical and mental fil my physical as well as my mental fil fitness and uh, to, uh, you know, to make a judgment about who I am. The most difficult part about a meeting with President Biden is preparing for it because he is sharp, intensely probing, and detail-oriented and focused. The next president of the United States of America, Joe Biden! Folks, we got a lot of work to do. I don't really need you to get me elected. I need you once I'm elected. States want to revote. The states got defrauded. They were given false information. They voted on it. Now they want to recertify. They want it back. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. Because if Mike Pence does the right thing, we win the election. All Vice President Pence has to do is send it back to the states to recertify. We knew because of the unprecedented early vote and the mail-in vote, that it's going to take a while. It's a pure theft in American history. Everybody knows it. That election, our election, was over at 10 o'clock in the evening. We're leading Pennsylvania, Michigan, Georgia, by hundreds of thousands of votes. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. But we're going to try and give our Republicans, the weak ones, because the strong ones don't need any of our help, we're tr going to try and give them the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. So let's walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. I want to thank you all. God bless you and God bless America. And it ain't over till every vote is counted. Every ballot is counted. The votes for President of the United States are as follows. Joseph R. Biden, Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida has received 232 votes. Kamala D. Harris of the state of California has received 306 votes. Michael R. Pence of the state of Indiana has received 232 votes. We did it. We did it, Joe. You're going to be the next president of the United States. <laughs> that of President Trump remaining defiant and not conceding this race. There was no widespread fraud in the 2020 election. Uh, Georgia's top Republican election officials have acknowledged that repeatedly in interviews. Uh, and what there was, however, was record-setting turnout, especially by voters of color. In conclusion, because of these and other efforts, on November 12, 2000, uh, 2020, government and industry representatives from the election security community issued a joint statement reflecting a consensus perspective that the 2020 election was the most secure in U.S. history. He was obviously getting very angry about this. I said, okay, well, look, I, I understand you're upset with me, and I'm perfectly happy to tender my resignation. And then, boom! He slaps the desk. He slapped the desk, and he said, accepted, accepted. And then, boom, he slapped it again, accepted. Go home. Don't go back to your office. Because the most combustible thing you can do in a democracy is convince people that an election doesn't count, that their voice and their vote don't count, and that it's all been stolen, especially if what you're saying are lies. So just a quick yes or no, you don't think anyone's trying to steal the election? Oh, I, I'm sure individuals would like to be able to, but I don't think there's a widespread uh, uh, conspiracy of some kind. Those, those things just don't happen the way people would uh, anticipate they might. President Donald Trump still claims he won the election. President-elect Joe Biden calls that an embarrassment. I, I think it will not help the president's legacy. Mr. Vice President, is it time to concede? It's time for the president's lawyers to present the facts, and then it's time for those facts to speak for themselves. We can't back you blindly without evidence. By all indications today, the president wants to keep fighting all the way to the Supreme Court. President Trump should not concede. At this point, we do not know who has prevailed in the election. His claims of election fraud uh, are baseless. Until the Electoral College votes. 
anyone who's running for office can exhaust concerns about counting. No, 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 no. There is nothing that shows that the election was stolen from him. When does a scam become a coup? Media doesn't decide who becomes president. It gets decided by our electors, not by NBC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN, and even Fox. It's never been substantiated, the presence of widespread voter for fraud, and yet it's been used as the excuse for all kinds of voter suppression tactics. Especially Fox News has a particular obligation to make sure people know the election wasn't stolen. Fox and we've said News, that Fox times. News, Brad, I'm going to answer your question. Fox News needs to make no, sure that the American people. Fox News, you have they to need know to that make this sure show has said that, that the American times. people, Brett, you're doing the interview. I'm answering the questions. We need to make sure that the American people recognize and understand that the election wasn't stolen, that we shouldn't perpetuate the big lie. They were ready to shut down the precinct. They had counted all the ballots. Everything was good. Everything went smoothly. And then it was at about 4 a.m. that three vehicles arrived, a van. <laughs> a Chrysler 300 and a Ferrari with 130,000 plus ballots, every single ballot, like literally 100% of that 130,000 ballots was, um, were all Biden. We want an honest, accurate, lawful count. We want maximum sunlight. We want maximum transparency. We want every legal vote to be counted and we want every illegal vote to well, be... Well, I, I just think we have to be very clear. She's charging, uh, the other side is welcoming fraud and welcoming illegal voting. Unless she has more details to back that up, I can't in good countenance continue showing you this. I want to make sure that maybe they do have something to back that up. But that's an explosive charge to make. The other side is effectively rigging and cheating. Uh, if she does bring proof of that, of course, we'll take you back. All of the organizations who had the responsibility to check the nature of this election and to verify its results say there was no fraud. That's the propaganda they're putting out. I disagree with that completely, and we have and will produce additional evidence that shows otherwise. Are you saying that thousands of Americans participated in a fraud? I am saying that thousands of Americans had some role in it, knowingly or unknowingly. It was essentially a bloodless coup where they took over the presidency of the United States without a single shot being fired. Is this essentially a non-violent attempted coup? I think Trump is throwing rocks through windows. I think he's the, the political equivalent of a street rioter. The Trump campaign simply has no evidence. Their basic argument is this was a conspiracy so vast and so successful that there's no evidence of it. Now, if that's true, I really want to know who the people are who pulled this off. We need to hire them at the CIA. Well, the CIA and the FBI and other government organizations have received multiple reports of wrongdoing and failures and vulnerabilities in this company's product. We've detected voting irregularities that are inexplicable and align with these problems in other states. Breaking news tonight involving Fox News and owner Rupert Murdoch acknowledging under oath that Fox News hosts endorsed false election fraud claims. And I think this really actually exposes the fact that Fox is not at its core a news network. News networks, um, they deliver the truth as they know it to viewers. They do the best job to attain the truth and sometimes it's not perfect, but that's what they do. In this case, we know that behind the scenes, top personnel knew that the narrative they were pushing to viewers was not true. Despite what the former president and his allies have said for now more than two and a half years and continue to insist to this very hour, the Georgia election was not stolen and I had no right to overturn the election on January 6th. Has the White House made a determination about whether it will continue to extend the privilege of intelligence briefings to former President Trump, given the concerns among some Democrats that he'll either misuse it or leverage it to enrich himself? Mm -hmm. This is a good question. I've raised it with our intelligence teams or our national security team, I should say. Uh, it's something, obviously, that's under review, but um, there was not a conclusion last I asked them about it, but I'm happy to follow up on it and see if there's more to share. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. This moment calls for healing and reconciliation. 
2020 has been a challenging time for our people. A menacing pandemic has upended the lives of our citizens, isolated millions in their homes, damaged our economy, and claimed countless lives. Defeating this pandemic and rebuilding the greatest economy on Earth will require all of us working together. It will require a renewed emphasis on the civic values of patriotism, faith, charity, community, and family. We must revitalize the sacred bonds of love and loyalty that bind us together as one national family. To the citizens of our country, serving as your president has been the honor of my lifetime. And to all of my wonderful supporters, I know you are disappointed, but I also want you to know that our incredible journey is only just beginning. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. From day one, we've seen President Biden break away from President Trump's border policies. Here at home, the Biden administration is now moving to cancel funding for the border wall and return the funds to the Pentagon. Thousands of migrants are heading to the U.S.-Mexico border before their November elections due to concerns that former President Donald Trump might permanently close it. So, we're going to build it. Who's going to pay for the wall? 100%. By the way, 100%. But I've asked her, uh, the VP today, because she's the most qualified person to do it, to lead our efforts with uh, Mexico and the Northern Triangle and the countries uh, that uh, help, uh, are going to need help in stemming the movement of uh, so many folks uh, stemming the migration to our southern border. Instead, they offered a new version of the big lie, an updated version 2.0 that weaves together existing election conspiracies with Trump's other favorite conspiracy theory, the so-called migrant takeover of the United States. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look, we had the safest border in the history of our country. The board, all he had to do was leave it. All he had to do was leave it. He decided to open up our border, open up our country to people that are from prisons, people that are from mental institutions, insane asylum, terrorists. We have the largest number of terrorists coming into our country right now, all terrorists all over the world. American elections are for American citizens, and we intend to keep it that way. They're coming from Venezuela, the Congo, Africa, Asia, South America. Democrats are shipping in brown people from all over the world to turn them into illegal voters. Elaborate and also wildly untrue. Right now, the Biden administration right now is the one that's luring these children to the border with the promise of being able to get in. That's simply not true. There's no data to support what he said. Once again, he's exaggerating, he's lying. A new report reveals that 350,000 asylum cases have been closed by the U.S. government since 2022, claiming those migrants did not have a criminal record and were not deemed a threat to the country. For years, Democrats have called Republicans conspiracy theorists for stating Democrats want illegal aliens to vote in our elections, yet President Biden and every single Democrat in Washington want this bill to fail. I'd like to bring up the most racist thing I've ever heard is the insinuation by Democrats that black and brown Americans are too stupid to get an ID to vote, just like everybody else. I call this the soft bigotry of low expectations. Build that wall, 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 build that wall. We have threats on multiple fronts. The stakes couldn't be any higher. I mean, everything is under attack. Free speech, private property, faith, liberty, children, our families, everything is at stake. But the opportunity we have to stop it, the unique position we've been placed in, set in motion by a system of our forefathers and framers of this great nation, is even more extraordinary. Such a consequential president of the United States, a Mount Rushmore kind of president of the United States, Are want to really know what comes next. That he belongs up there on Mount Rushmore. Lincoln and Joe Biden. But you got Teddy Roosevelt up there, and he's wonderful. I don't say take him down, but you can add Biden. Start your tape right now, because I'm about to tell you the truth. And F you, 
if you can't handle the truth. This version of Biden, intellectually, analytically, is the best Biden ever. I've said it for years now. He's cogent. Mm -hmm. But I undersold him when I said he was cogent. He's far beyond cogent. I know you guys are objective over there, that you just report the news as it is. <laughs> oh, I know, CNN makes a, I know. Is that supposed to be a laugh line? I wasn't supposed to be, but uh, I guess it is. Um, <laughs> First of all, you should, let's, let's just <laughs> gather ourselves here. The President of the United States' body moves a little slower, but his mind is just as quick as ever. Well, look, we're, we're in about 10, 10 days or so, eight days, we're gonna see that right here on CNN, right? We're gonna have a debate where we're gonna see the President of the United States stand on stage and have to do it. This is a pivotal moment between President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump in their rematch for the nation's highest office. Each will make his case to the American people with just over four months until Election Day. Well, look, the greatest economy in the world, he, he's the only one who thinks that, I think. I don't know anybody else who thinks he's he had the greatest economy in the world. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, we found ourselves in a situation where his, his economy, he rewarded the wealthy. He had the largest tax cut in American history, $2 trillion. When he was president, we still found ourselves in a position where you had a notion that we were this safe country. The truth is, I'm the only president this century that doesn't have any, this, this decade, that doesn't have any troops dying anywhere in the world. But the only thing he was right about is I gave you the largest tax cut in history. I also gave you the largest regulation cut in history. That's why we had all the jobs. And the jobs went down and then they bounced back and he's taking credit for bounce back jobs. You can't do that. He also said he inherited 9% inflation. No. He inherited almost no inflation, and it stayed that way for 14 months, and then it blew up under his leadership because they spent money like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing, and they don't know what they were doing. It was the worst, probably the worst administration in history. There was no inflation when I became president. You know why? The economy was flat on its back, 15% unemployment. He decimated the economy, absolutely decimated the economy. That's why there was no inflation at the time. There were no jobs making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare. The debate of the 2024 presidential campaign is now history. The fallout from it is just getting started. We had a little debate last week. Can't say it was my best performance. We love it, Trump. It was a bad night. Let's not sugarcoat that. It was a bad night. It was a great presidency. I mean, can you say that you are not concerned at all having watched the president's performance tonight? It was a slow start. That's obvious to everyone. I'm not going to debate that point. I'm talking it about the choice in November. But what was especially amazing was afterward, they went to the panel of assembled Democratic operatives posing as journalists, and all of them were, like, shocked to discover that Joe Biden has dementia. Like, they couldn't believe it. <laughs> what? Oh, my gosh. I don't care if he's pooped his pants. I don't care if he can't put a sentence together. Show me he can't do the job, and then I'll say, okay, maybe it's time to go. I'm staying in the race. I'll beat Donald Trump. I will beat him again in 2020. What concerns do you have about Vice President Harris's ability to beat Donald Trump if she were at the top of the ticket? Look. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be Vice President, but I think she was not qualified to be President. So let's start there. Good afternoon. I want to welcome these leaders for coming in to have this very important discussion um, about some of the most pressing issues of our time. Um, I am Kamala Harris. My pronouns are she and her. I am a woman sitting at the table wearing a blue suit. Together we make history, not erase it. To me, the values of diversity, equality, inclusion, 
are literally, and that's not kidding, the core strengths of America. That's why I'm proud to have the most diverse administration in history. It taps into the full talents of our country. It starts at the top with the vice president. And you know, we have to stay woke. Like, everybody needs to be woke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay more woke than less woke. <laughs> yeah. If Comrade Waltz and Comrade Harris win this November, the people cheering will be the pink-haired Marxists, the looters, the perverts, the flag burners, Hamas supporters, drug dealers, gun grabbers, and human traffickers. But with a Trump fans victory, the cheers will come from the police officers, the firefighters, the Border Patrol agents, the steel workers, small business owners, parents, and hardworking citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. Of course, these stories in The New York Times, The Washington Post, CNN, and elsewhere are not conspiracy theories. These are news stories sourced by government officials. Conspiracy theories are different. They're, they're false, they're crackpot, they're nonsense. These are, are facts as established by former and current national security and intelligence officials as President Trump almost seemed to simultaneously acknowledge today. People think that one way to build trust is to declassify things that everyone's talking about. I know you talked earlier about, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. So if you were president, would you declassify, you can answer yes or no to these. Yeah. Would you declassify the 9-11 um, files? Yeah. Would you declassify JFK files? Yeah. Would you, I did. I did a lot of it. Would you declassify the Epstein files? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Whether or not they believe what these fantasies that Trump is spilling, uh, spinning about the lizard people and the pedophiles taking his election from him, they can use that manufactured crisis for their own purposes. At the cross of the theory is this belief that you are secretly saving the world from this satanic cult of pedophiles and cannibals. Does that sound like something you are behind? Or well, I haven't, I haven't heard that, but uh, is that supposed to be a bad thing or a good thing? I mean, you know, if, uh, if I can help save the world from problems, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to put myself out there. And we are, actually. We're saving the world from a radical left, philosophy that will destroy this country. And when this country is gone, the rest of the world would follow. Mr. Trump, I just want to be $50,000. Are you worried about going to jail? This was a disgrace. This was a rigged trial by a conflicted judge who was corrupt. They wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. You have a Soros-backed DA and the whole thing. We didn't do a thing wrong. I'm a very innocent man. This is long from over. Thank you very much. We have a normal president and a former president who is poised to be his party's nominee again, who rants and rambles and lies, who is a 34 count felon and a coup plotter who tried to steal an election and admires dictators, who vows vengeance and brags that he'll be a dictator and who has zero respect for the debate stage, for democracy, for half the population, meaning women or immigrants or black and brown Americans, but lots of seeming respect for Adolf Hitler. Well, let's talk about the conversation this has started, and it's really about language, what we say out loud and the consequences of those. You called your opponent an existential threat uh, on a call a week ago. You said it's time to put Trump in the bullseye. There's some dispute about the, the context, but I think you appreciate I didn't say crosshairs. I was talking about focus on. Look, the truth of the matter was, what I guess I was talking about at the time was, there was very little focus on Trump's. Agenda. Yeah, the term was bullseye. It was, a, it was a mistake to use the word. I didn't, mean, I didn't say crosshairs. I meant bullseye. I meant focus on it. Now the Marxist left is once again using the same corrupt DOJ and the same corrupt FBI and attorneys general and local district attorneys to interfere in our election 
at a level that our country has never witnessed before. These criminals cannot be rewarded. They must be defeated. We have to defeat them soundly. In the end, they're not coming after me. They're coming after you, and I'm just standing in their way. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. What do you think the intelligence community would do if they were motivated I don't know, to? but I, from what I am told, they are very upset with how he has treated them and talked about them. And the donor class can't just sit back on the sidelines and say, oh, well, don't worry, this will all work itself out. They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump, and that's a fact. They're going to have try to have me murdered. If that stuff that came out last week is right about the cartel stuff, I mean, right? they say the cartel's operating in 50 states right now. Like all 50, you mm -hmm. know? So what, what, what's going on? Who is it? What? Forget the who. Let me just tell you the what. They want you to be on their team. You know? But if they're pushing a globalist agenda, I can't do that. So what do they want? What do they want me to do? They want you to stay opportunities. This is about defeating Trump. This is about the final death blow to Trump. There he is right there. Right there, see him? He's laying down. Yeah, look, there he is. Because we have millions and millions of people in our country that shouldn't be here. Dangerous people. Criminals. We have criminals. We have criminals. We have people that should not be here. He's going down! If I give you one message to hold in your hearts today, it's this. Never, ever give up. Just never quit. Never stop fighting for what you believe in and for the people who care about you. Carry yourself with dignity and pride. Demand the best from yourself and be totally unafraid to challenge entrenched interests and failed power structures. Does that sound familiar, by the way? The more people tell you it's not possible, that it can't be done, the more you should be absolutely determined to prove them wrong. Treat the word impossible as nothing more than motivation. Relish the opportunity to be an outsider. Embrace that label. Being an outsider is fine. Embrace the label because it's the outsiders who change the world and who make a real and lasting difference. The more that a broken system tells you that you're wrong, the more certain you should be that you must keep pushing ahead. You must keep pushing forward. Donald, you're in your late 30s. You got 40 years to live, minimum. Well, I hope you're right about that. What are you going to do? Ladies and gentlemen, I am officially running. So many things to do. Politics? There's so many. No. 
not politics. For President of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. You've said that you could do a better job at negotiating an arms control agreement with the Soviets than some of these professionals who've been trying to do it for years. I will have that war settled between Putin and Zelensky as president-elect before I take office on January 20th. I'll have that war settled. People being killed so needlessly, so stupidly, and I will get it settled, and I'll get it settled fast before I take office. Somebody has to help this country, and if they don't, the country and the world are in big trouble. Tonight, Donald Trump speaking about retribution and revenge, saying sometimes revenge can be justified. Revenge is coming against all of those involved in holding Trump accountable for his crimes. I don't care about the revenge thing. I know they usually, usually use the word revenge. Will there be revenge? Uh, my revenge will be success. You had the former president saying that he would go after President Biden. You now have him adding by name Hillary Clinton to that list, adding Alvin Bragg to that list. The threat is becoming increasingly specific. I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. I am your retribution. I'm not going to let this happen. I will totally obliterate the deep state. For too long, a small group in our nation's capital has reaped the rewards of government while the people have borne the cost. The establishment protected itself, but not the citizens of our country. But that is the past. And now we are looking only to the future. When you open your heart to patriotism, there is no room for prejudice. When America is united, America is totally unstoppable. A new national pride will stir our souls, lift our sights, and heal our divisions. You guys know what this represents? Well, memories the colony goes. Let's start. Could be. Um, the colony before the storm.